Vocabulary. Hydrogen ion. Hydroxide ion. pH scale. Acid base. Hey, you know, water, with all of its amazing properties, such as hydrogen bonding and polarity, also does another pretty cool thing. What you're seeing with the words and the pictures on this uh, page so far is a basic chemical reaction, which you can learn more about by viewing a different video in the series. Basically, water, which is the chemical formula for water right here, randomly splits into two different ions, a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion. In fact, water just randomly breaks apart. It's about one in 100, or sorry, one in 550 million molecules of water does this. To give you an idea of the scale of that amount, it would be like taking the United States, here let me draw the United States, there's Texas, yay, and oh, we can't forget our, our big friends from the north, Alaska, and our little friends to the west, Hawaii. If you took the United States population and multiplied it by two, that'd give you a rough estimate. That's roughly uh, 600 million. It would be like, sorry, let me write a million here. It would be like if one person out of two, every two United States were to randomly split. It would be kind of weird and kind of gross, but it's, it's really kind of a small number in the grand scheme of uh, water molecules. However, what you need to understand is that in a basic glass of water, there are billions, billions with a B, water molecules. And because there are billions of water molecules, you can actually measure the amount of the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions. Now, let me show you with this picture exactly what we mean by hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. You see, water, here's with the oxygen molecule and its two hydrogen, H2O, will randomly break down to one H off by itself and an OH off by itself. Now, what happens is the hydrogen gives away its, its sharing, you remember the sharing electrons with the oxygen covalently, it will give away its electrons to oxygen. This other hydrogen stay, stays bonded. I'm just drawing the ones that are used for bonding here. Please don't forget there are other uh, electrons around this oxygen molecule. The hydrogen will give away its electron. It gave it away. And we, when it gave it away, it now only has one proton, which means it has a positive charge. The oxygen molecule, which took this electron away from the hydrogen, now has one extra electron, which gives it an overall negative charge. And that's why on these ions, you see positive and negative charges. It's because the hydrogen ion is positively charged. It lost what? An electron. The hydroxide ion is negative because it gained what? An electron. And let's remember that's how ions are formed. You can actually measure the amount of hydrogen ions in a solution. And when you do, you might find out that sometimes there's hydrogen ions, uh, there are more of them than there are hydroxide ions. However, in pure water, I'm going to clear the, clear the ink here. In pure water, this is exactly what you see. You see, for every molecule of water that breaks down randomly, you get one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. They're always, always going to be equal. And it's because of the fact that water is made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. If you break apart one hydrogen, what do you have left? You've got 
the hydroxide ion. And that is how you get an even balance for every molecule of water that's broken down. Every single one of these, if you had a hundred of these, you would end up having a hundred hydrogen ions and a hundred hydroxide ions. It's balanced. In pure water, the hydrogen ions equal the hydroxide ions. And I'm going to draw these little boxes around here. It's because in chemistry we talk about concentration and um, that just helps us remember a number. The number of hydrogen ions here equals the number of hydroxide ions here. In pure water that's always the case. And you can measure that. Anything that has an imbalance where the hydrogen ions are more than the hydroxide ions or the hydrogen ions are less than the hydroxide ions, we, we call them something else. And that is what we term an acid and a base. An acid is any solution, because usually, usually it's water-based, where the uh, hydrogen ions, the number of them, is more than the number of hydroxide ions. You might be able to think of some common examples of acids like acid rain, regular rain, and one of my favorite breakfast beverages, orange juice. Orange juice is acidic because orange juice has in it citric, what? Acid. That's right. Citric acid. And that acid makes it slightly acidic. Well, we also have bases. And a base is any substance, or solution rather, any solution, again water-based, where the number of the hydrogen ions is less than the number of the hydroxide ions. And this is uh, happening where sometimes you have solutions where you end up having less of these and more of these. Some common bases are things like toothpaste, soap, which I've got a picture of here for you to see, soap, bleach, and other household cleaners. What do they all have in common? Well, they're all cleaners. Toothpaste cleans your teeth, soap cleans your body, bleach cleans your counters. Cleaners tend to be basic. A lot of the foods you eat can be acidic. But we, don't, we generally don't eat cleaners, so you generally eat things that are not as basic. And you can actually measure this amount. I've been saying that for the last few slides. And the way that scientists measure that is on a, something called the pH scale. The pH scale, these are sample pH scales, the pH scale measures... the amount of hydrogen ions compared to the hydroxide ions. And here are two examples of pH scales. Here's one where it gives you some common substances and their basic pH. Now if you were to look at different sources like perhaps in a textbook or other places online, you're going to see these numbers. Like for instance, it, it has lemon juice as 2 on the pH scale. Other sources are going to put lemon juice somewhere more at 2.5. Um, other substances like seawater somewhere around 8, whereas other, you know, a textbook might put uh, seawater like 8.5. This is just a, an image to help you understand that there's close to each pH number here, like 8, there's a substance which has that pH that is common to you. For instance, when you go to the bathroom, you use urine, and that urine that comes out of you has a pH roughly of 6, and that's a rough approximation. Coffee that's, that is consumed has a pH of about 5, tomato juice about 4, orange juice about 3, lemon juice about 2, gastric acid 
gastric acid is the stomach acid, the stuff in your stomach, that has a pH of around 1. Now, uh, what I do want you to take note of is that the, the further down from 7 you go, the more acidic you get. That's lousy. Let me find it here. More acidic from seven down. However, as you move away from seven and go up, you get more basic. That's because pH of 7.00 is considered to be neutral. That's that situation where the hydrogen ions equals the number of hydroxide ions. Anything lower than 7 pH which is smaller than 7, is acidic. pH, which is greater than 7, is basic. And what you get is anything above uh, a 10 or 12, depending on who you're talking to, is very basic. And anything below a 2 is very acidic. And an important point I want to note here is that pH, generally speaking, acids are represented in red colors. And bases are represented in blue colors. Let's review. Water breaks down randomly. When it does, H2O will form hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And sometimes those hydroxide and hydro hydrogen ions go back and they form water. That gives us the idea of um, acids and bases. Acids have more hydrogen ions. Bases have more hydroxide ions. And there's a scale which measures it which is called the pH scale. This is Aaron Willems. Thank you for watching and do your best to make a positive difference in somebody's life today.